Hi, so welcome back to Real Auto Reports. I'm Jonathan McGrew, and this is the real video, the real review on the Lexus IS350 Lux all-wheel drive. Now, we've seen quite a few of these, so if you're wondering, wow, that's a lot of Lexuses. The thing is, is that there's a lot of versions of this IS, and that's what we're gonna talk about in this real review. What is so cool about the 350 how is it really different from the 250 we just reviewed not that long ago and the F-Sport packages you can add to these. And we've seen all of them here at Real Auto Reports, so let's check it out. All right, so we are in the IS350. We are cruising along here. And, you know, there's things that you notice the more and more you interact with a car. And it's why I advocate for people to really test drive the cars that they're looking at buying and living with for a long time because and even if you're not even if you're someone who changes your car out every couple years or every three or four years it it behooves you to drive these cars in a number of different scenarios with a number of different people i mean take some friends with you check out the passenger room you know take take some stuff with you maybe and and see how your daily stuff fits in the trunk because i'll tell you this time driving this IS350, and there's no body difference between the 250 and the 350 or the F-Sports. These are all the same vehicles from a chassis and, um, well, body and interior room configuration is what I'm saying. So you're not going to get any different leg room in a 350 or a 250. So what I noticed is that with four people in this IS, it is really tight and and these don't have to be super tall people we're talking your average 5'8 to 5'10 and if you're six foot like i am this front seat is really far back i can get in the back seat with my driving position where it is but it is tight and you kind of want to sit sideways because it's just not all that comfortable back there so one of the things that i think is interesting about this is is that it's got a, a pretty luxurious price point, well over $40,000, especially when you have the Lux package like we have here. And so you have to ask yourself what you're buying the car for. And the more and more I've interacted with the IS brand, I think that, within Lexus that is, I, I think that I've realized that it's very similar to the other luxury brands, which is no surprise, but if you're gonna buy a BMW 320 or a 328, you're a different buyer than, say, the 335. And you're also getting a very different car from a power perspective. And this IS is, is like that, but I don't think the differences are as drastic. Neither are the price points in the brands. So what I like about this IS350 is that with the luxury package, you get some great appointments in, in a luxury feeling car. You know, this car feels luxurious and it feels really sporty. So you get this dual tone interior. So you've got this kind of cream gray white in here. You know, it's got this nice tone, just like the headliner. You've got perforated seats. You've got heated and cooled seats in the front, which is excellent. Something that makes you feel like you've got all those high end options. You've got your climate control, dual climate control, and this car, like I've mentioned before in other reviews, it has the touch sensors for the, uh, the climate control. I kind of like this center stack. I think it's interesting. I think the rails and the way that they've given it some interest is nice. Other people find it a little on the cheap side, so you're going to have to take your impressions and see what you think when you get in the car and start, you know, interacting with it. This is a neat car though. It's a car that has a lot of power in the 350. And that's the big difference from the real video that we did in the 250. The 250 just doesn't have the rip roaring power that this car does. This car will really set you back in your seat. And I like that. I, I think this is the, this is definitely the vehicle you would compare to the C350, the BMW 335i, the Audi S5 or um, S, S4 actually, um, if you were gonna get the sedan, because the S5 is the coupe. But this is the car that when you really, you know, stand on the accelerator, you feel like you're getting pushed back. It's got a nice exhaust sound. 
it does everything you want it to. And even in our driving, we're seeing, well, according to the trip computer, an average of about 24.4 miles per gallon, and that's combined driving. I think that this vehicle is very good for what it is, but it is tight. I think my passengers biggest complaint about this vehicle from a living with it perspective and trying to go shopping is the trunk is good sized in this vehicle you can get a lot in it especially if you're a Costco shopper or you know you take people to the airport you can get a big like Ramoa rolling suitcase in the trunk easily you can probably get two of them in there plus some carry-ons not bad at all but in the interior is where you get let down both side to side and the legroom in the back and even our passengers found that in the front seat in this car it was tight when you had people in the back seat because of how much sculpting this dash has and it's kind of its blessing and its curse all at the same time the is has a beautiful design language to it it's been well thought out in terms of being interesting and in different finishes and the cross stitching you know, the contrast stitching, I should say, across the dashboard and the soft touch. Everything in this vehicle is top-notch from Lexus's point of view. The issue with it is that, well, the vehicle is not really a people carrier. It's a driver-centric car. And as long as you know that and you like it, it's going to be good for you. Because I will tell you, having driven this on an autocross slalom course, driven the BMW and the Mercedes all on the auto cross course setup and it you know comparable vehicles even the Audi these Lexus ISs have a wonderful driving sense to them in terms of the suspension how flat they are through the corners the engagement of the all-wheel drive the traction control and, and anti-skid control systems are nice. I like the sport modes, but what you're going to find when you drive this car daily is unless you like eco mode and you like it dumbing it down a little bit for you so you get the best economy, normal is going to be sufficient for just about everything you want to do. The sport modes and the paddle shifters and the ability to click it over and shift with the shifter, it's got all of that. It will let you drive the way you want to and with the all-wheel drive you can still have the sports tires on it and still get around in in general inclement weather i mean rain's not going to be a problem for you the thing that will start to become a problem is snowpack and snow when you get deep amounts of snow and you're on a sport tire but you can always have that second set of rims and with the all-wheel drive and a snow tire this car is only going to be deterred by the lack of ground clearance it has and I like it I think that that Lexus has done a great job from the previous generation I think this generation is something that people will continue to interact with I still don't like this hump behind the driver's right foot that they put in into the driver's uh, foot well area here it, it grinds on me every time I drive this car there's some other things that in interacting with this car over this time period you know and several models i will say that my personality lends itself to the f sport 350 because i love the power i love the sound and i like a few of the additional performance options that come with it especially around the suspension and the steering however with the lux version of this 350 in the two-tone interior this is quite the car it's at the upper echelons of this. You can also get the rear wheel drive and it's gonna drive a little bit um, freer, if you will. It's gonna give you a sense that you can let the tail hang out a little bit more because you don't have that all wheel drive system impacting that. And it's also gonna go zero to 60 a little bit faster. But all in all, I think, you know, every time I sit and I think about this, I think, what do I wanna tell the consumer? There are things that are gonna kind of you're gonna go oh god why did they do that and like one of those is the non-color digital gauge in between the two speedometers uh, they opted for this monochrome gauge cluster and the problem is is it washes out when you are driving in the sun because of the angle of this front gauge cluster there are times where the sun's coming through the front of the windshield up here and you cannot see 
the gauges almost at all because of the faces of them. And that includes the, the numbers on the speed dial itself. But that's, you know, those are things you're going to find with it. You're going to find nitpicky things with every car. I think the biggest thing is, if this is a car you're going to drive every day, it's mostly going to be you. Maybe you have a kid and, uh, you know, putting them in the back is not going to be a big deal. That's fine. If this is going to be a people carrier, I think you're going to find that your passengers aren't going to love you very much for it. Because on a daily... It's, it is a small car, and it feels small. Um, it, the car itself is not tiny, but the interior dimensions, compared to even its competition, are going to feel narrow in the width. Um, it is raked in the top. People hit their heads when they get in this car. Uh, I know from some of our passengers, especially the gal passengers that we've had with the buns, if you have a bun on your head here and you're trying to get in and the front seat's moved up because someone's getting in the back, you're going to uh, risk bun removal. And so just some considerations. But I'm not nailing Lexus on this car. This is a neat car, one that... And see, it even has things like the hands-free. So your phone rings right there, and you see who it is, and you can pick it up and answer it from the, from the car right here. It's a neat car, and we'll have the wrap-up coming for you next. So that's the real video, the real review, on the 2014 Lexus IS350 with the Lux package. This is the all-wheel drive, and we do have the 3.5-liter V6 engine. Now, this vehicle is going to see about 19 to 26 miles per gallon from a fuel economy perspective, and you're going to see 0 to 60 in a, in a pretty healthy speed in that six second range. It is a nice vehicle that has all the luxury appointments that you would expect from Lexus, especially competing with vehicles like the 3 Series, the A4, and the Mercedes C-Class. It'll also compete with the G sedans from Infiniti. And uh, well, you know, the question is whether you're looking for a personal coupe or personal sedan in this case, or something with a little bit more room. The perception we have after seeing many of these ISs from the launch back in San Francisco at Alameda Island to today is that really the thing that is a negative in these cars is the interior dimensions. They are tight, low-slung cars, and they really do have trouble putting four passengers into them comfortably, especially if you have any height involved. However, if you're driving this car for yourself and you love a well-mannered driving sports sedan, you just can't beat the handling that they've put into these ISs. Now, the technology's on par with most of the stuff that's out there. There's nothing revolutionary, but, uh, you know, we think that for the most part, this is the, uh, well, the compromise between wanting a sports car and needing something that will occasionally carry passengers and stuff because it does have a healthy trunk. At right about $50,355 as tested, it's uh, still on the pricier side of the luxury entry level or luxury small car market in terms of small four doors so it's going to be a compact four door in most regards so you'll have to keep that in mind and make sure you shop the competition and come back here to real auto reports for more reviews coming down the road i'm jonathan mcgrew this is real auto reports from real auto ranch and we will see you in our next video very soon